From the Wynn Resort in Las Vegas, it's theCUBE, covering .next Conference 2016. Brought to you by Nutanix. Now, here are your hosts, Dave Vellante and Stu Miniman. Welcome back to Nutanix.next. NextConf, hashtag NextConf is the, the Twitter you know, action all going on there. Uh, I'm here with Stu Miniman. This is Silicon Angles, the Cube. We go out to the events, we extract the signal from the noise. Silicon Angles, a media company. This is our flagship product. We call it our game day. Glenn Allison is here. He's the vice president of enterprise architecture at Tractor Supply Company. Glenn, first time in <laughs> the Cube. Welcome. Dave, great to thanks see you. for having me on, Stu. It's great to be here. Uh, so dot next, you know, growing. Were you at Miami last year? Were you down there? So this is my first time at uh, dot next. So. Okay, so it's a good vibe to it, right? I mean, yeah, it's exciting, and there's a lot of energy here. From what I understand, uh, talking with Howard before. I mean, there's more than double the attendees uh, from last year, so very clearly growing. Yeah, close to triple. So uh, tell us about Tractor Supply Company and what you do there. Sure, so uh, Tractor Supply is the largest rural lifestyle retailer in the United States. Uh, we've got over 1,500 stores. Uh, last year, our revenue was approximately 6.2 billion uh, in sales. Uh, and, and we're growing. Uh, we're continuing to add stores, uh, expanding throughout the U.S. Uh, and in essence, uh, you know, Tractor Supply, a little bit about the store, the brand. Uh, you know, our customers, they typically live a rural lifestyle. They're, they're landowners, they have animals. Uh, they're typically do-it-yourselfers. And, you know, they count on Tractor Supply. They come in, um, you know, for expertise on products. Um, you know, our team members, we hire our customers. And uh, we have the products that they need to live that lifestyle. And they're, they're small to large retail stores, or? So, they're, uh, so we've got over 1,500 stores, uh, varying kind of footprints. Uh, you know, to some degree, we've got you know, over 1,500 unique stores just in that um, we ensure we have the right products in those stores for the community. So community is something that's really important. Um, you know, Tractor Supply is involved with 4-H as an example. We're part of the community, and, and so uh, in terms of like the footprint and kind of what's in a store, it's constantly evolving and it's you know listening to customers and understanding what they need, and making sure we have that. So it's, it varies, though, right? You'll you'll essentially have a, a store that's that's built for that community, right? It's not a am I right or is it just sort of a like Chipotle model? It's not a Chipotle model. It's not model. a Chipotle model. We have one in my town, <laughs> but and it, it's a it's a it's small. Uh, you know, we're, I, yeah, I would just, you know, we're a unique niche. Yeah. Uh, you know, we, we support the rural lifestyle. Um, you know, in terms of kind of the footprint, I mean, you'll see some similarities across each of the stores, you know, in terms of some of the products that we have. Right. You know, I'll give you an example. Uh, For Health Dog Food, one of our fastest growing brands, uh, multi-million dollar brand, you're going to find that in, Pretty much. you know, every tractor supply store. Sure. I mean, there's... In, Everybody has dogs. <laughs> <laughs> and you're an enterprise I, architect. I actually right? just got a puppy, uh, the Allison House, uh, a few weeks ago. So, awesome. What kind of puppy? <laughs> it's a mix. Uh, okay. It's called a golden doodle. Yeah, yeah, cool. And it's uh, Good, uh, part, part poodle allergies. and part yeah, yeah. golden retriever. Awesome. Puppies are great. We love them. And, it's uh, uh, when you, when you get a puppy, it's like having a baby. Like you have to go in, and like there's a lot of different things that you need to get. So, so, got, we're, so you, we're in the store yeah, quite a bit. Say, pets, pets can be like your infrastructure is, uh, you know, especially puppies. If it's not put together well at the beginning, you know, boy, you got a lot of messes. You got to clean care up, for right? it. You got to feed it. <laughs> well, you know, with uh, with the enterprise cloud platform, and you know, I know we're here at Dot Next and all that, but. Uh, you know, generally our, in, our infrastructure is invisible, so uh, the thing that keeps me up at night is generally the puppy now. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that, that's, that's great, we had uh, one, one of the users at .next last week, last year said that when they put Nutanix in, they got their weekends back, and so you know, it, it sounds like we, you've got we, a similar we've, we've experience. We filled that time back up with, with, with the puppy. With, with yes. the puppies. So, so you use that term invisible, which uh, ties into the messaging, and I want to I unpack that a little bit. So as an enterprise architect, you're responsible for the entire infrastructure of the organization, is that right? Or? Yeah, so I, so I started with Tractor Supply a little over a year ago. So I, I moved from Chicago to Brentwood. Um, and, and as part of my role, so I'm responsible for enterprise architecture, uh, infrastructure engineering, so things like you know, our uh, servers, storage, networking, 
uh, that support our 1,500 plus stores, our data centers, uh, as well as IT quality assurance, uh, all the testing and rigor that goes into ensuring our applications are deployed with quality. Uh, and then uh, there's an IT solution delivery organization which is made up of our project management. So talk about the apps that you're supporting. I mean, obviously you got all these stores around, you got to sure. keep those humming. Describe sort of, give, paint a picture of what it looks like. Sure, so uh, you know, as you can imagine, uh, is one of the, the largest, uh, or the largest rural lifestyle retailers. Um, you know, when you go into a store, like from a technology perspective, like point of sale, uh, you know, all the systems that go into, into um, supporting a customer transaction, uh, so think about like pin pads and credit cards, you know, as an example, uh, right now a big focus is EMV and chip and signature, you know, for retailers. Uh, things like wireless and mobility, uh, you know, is another example. Okay, so, so what's your infrastructure look like? Um, you know, so, servers so, and, you know, the storage, the, the Nutanix product, maybe paint a picture for us. So sure, so, um, you know, we've got multiple data centers, we've got hundreds of different applications that we have to support. Um, and I would say the data center footprint's been evolving. So, you know, it, a little over a year ago, you know, we did an assessment of each of the different applications, the underlying infrastructure that supports those a applications. Uh, and and it, it was abundantly clear that there were some opportunities to just greatly simplify our architecture at the time. Um, you know, things that you might, might expect mo that are common with most companies. You had uh, multiple uh, different types of systems for uh, compute and storage and networking. Uh, and varying levels of complexity to support all of that infrastructure. Uh, and we worked with uh, several partners, like an example is, we, you know, we worked with CDW to help develop our strategy, the roadmap, uh, and then set out on a journey. You know, we had some strategic conversations with Nutanix, uh, in particular around the enterprise cloud platform. And then um, over a period of several months, I mean, we did a phased implementation, as in essence, moving workloads from those uh, legacy three-tier architectures uh, to the enterprise cloud platform. Yeah, I mean, we'll and so it's, I mean, I mean we've, we've decommissioned racks and racks of, uh, you know, legacy, you know, equipment, you know, compute, storage, networking, and the data center is uh, evolving. So we've, we've significantly reduced like our power, our floor space, but at the same time, we're adding capacity to support growth and, and for, Tractor supply growth is essential. You know, we're we're adding 120 new stores per year. You know, our, we plan to grow to 2,500 stores over the next several years, and uh, it, it, it's essential that we've got the systems, the processes in place to support that growth. Yeah. So, Glenn, I mean, something we've heard from users for, for a long time is they used to build their infrastructure on a per-application basis. You kind of had this bespoke silo that you built because for the requirements, and then you tweaked and optimized that. Sounds like you're making that shift to be able to create uh, you know, almost a platform for it. Can you talk about what applications fit on that? Are there any applications that don't fit on that environment that you're using the Nucanix? Sure. So. You know, from an enterprise architecture perspective, one of the things that we've been working on is just an integrated roadmap uh, across, you know, applications, infrastructure, security. You know, obviously, security for retailers is incredibly important. So we've got an integrated roadmap across each of the different functions in IT that's looking out three to five years. Um, in terms of the types of workloads that you know you can move towards uh, an enterprise cloud platform, our initial Waves, uh, you know, anything that was running Windows or Linux, uh, you know, we we targeted for the implementation uh, early on in the transition. You know, where I would say, kind of where we're now and kind of looking forward, kind of in the future, is looking at, you know, some of the more complex workloads like high I/O database uh, workloads, as well as uh, big data analytics. Um, and so we're working, you know, together with our partners and just. Uh, making sure that's a good consideration as part of our roadmap. It, it, I, I've just, uh, Nutanix made a bunch of announcements, things like bare metal support for some of those environments. Does that fit into the picture of what you're looking at? Exactly. I mean, yeah. these and and so we've 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 been working with partners, you know, such as Nutanix, uh, providing feedback. You know, I, I would say one of the things that's um, really good about the partnerships that we have is, you know, they listen to their customers. 
uh, and are responsive to the feedback. So a lot of, I think a lot of the announcements that were done uh, this week, which there were some big announcements today, um, you know, are in response to customer feedback you know, over the last several months, which um, you know, we deeply value, that's important. So, and Nutanix powers all this? Stuff, all the apps, all the. So we've we've migrated the majority of our workloads. There's some exceptions uh -huh. that you know we're working together with you know our partners to evaluate. But I, essentially, most of our workloads have been migrated You're now. Predominantly a Nutanix shop, if I can use that that phrase. Is that true? Or yeah, so I would say the majority yeah. of the workloads are on the Nutanix uh, uh -huh. enterprise cloud. And you're running VMware. VMware, yes. Okay, and that's and then there's also, I mean, there's a lot of announcements this week around Acropolis, uh, and you know we're looking at, um, you know, expanding our usage of Acropolis so, over time. Are you doing anything with public cloud? Yes. So uh, I'll give you a couple examples. Um, so, and really, I, you know, I would say we have the best of both worlds uh, when it comes to enterprise cloud platforms. So we've got. You know, majority of our workloads are within our data center, and we get the benefits of cloud. Um, you know, with the enterprise cloud platform, but then with public, uh, we're able to kind of leverage the scale that we get with public cloud. So, as an example, like our e-commerce environment, we have the ability to rapidly provision additional uh, systems to support busy periods throughout the year. Um, and it, uh, so like day after Thanksgiving is an example. Yeah. For most retailers, there's very busy time of year. Uh, we leverage the public cloud to help scale up for, for those uh -huh. periods. Cool, you mentioned a um, number of announcements today. We got, we got to wrap, but I'll, I'll wrap there and then <coughs> I have one final question. What's your favorite announcement? What, what in there is exciting to you as, a, as an IT practitioner, as a doer? We like to call you doers. You know, <laughs> uh, there was so many announcements today. Um, <laughs> that are, are big wins, I think, for customers. Um, certainly the work that's going on with Acropolis, I, I believe will be very disruptive uh, for the industry. There's going to be a number of benefits for customers. I mean, in as an example is virtual desktops. Uh, that's essentially a turnkey solution now mm -hmm. for customers. So that, I mean, I, I thought that was uh, an important announce for, for customers. You welcome AHT. that disruption. I as think a, it, you know, it's, I think it's going to be good for customers in the long run. Um, you know, having a ch having choice, uh, you know, and the the enterprise cloud platform also, you know, because it supports different hypervisors uh, and gives customers choice. I think that's a win. I think that's a win for most customers. So put the put the exclamation point bumper sticker, you know, on dot next your first dot next impressions takeaways. I mean, I know it's early, but things that you're, you learn or hope to learn? You know, so there's no doubt, I mean, you kind of look around, there's a lot of technology, there's a lot of flashing lights, there was a lot of like big announcements in terms of kind of new features and capabilities. For me, I think it's the people. Uh, so, you know, here I got the opportunity to meet with other customers. Um, you know, as an example, we spent some time in the customer advisory board yesterday meeting with a number of other customers across different industries. We were able to share some of our experiences, also influence kind of where the direction's going to go with the roadmap. We've um, gotten visibility with uh, our partners, uh, which have been invaluable through this transformation effort, and uh, also the Nutanix team members. Okay, sorry, leg cramp. <laughs> I'm sorry. All right, we, that's a wrap, Glenn. Thanks so much for coming on the Cube. Thank, we'll be right thanks. back, right after this word. Great to see you.